Susan Walsh, nay Young, was born on February 16, 1960, in Wayne, New Jersey. She was a freelance journalist and writer, having aspired to be a poet from a young age. Her upbringing is described as having been troubled. Susan attended William Patterson University in New Jersey, where she studied English and writing. While in school, she was employed as a journalist for the school newspaper and also worked as a stripper and exotic dancer to help pay for tuition. She graduated in 1988 with her bachelor's and started to work as a writer for various engineering and business publications. Later on, she was employed as a writer for Screw magazine. In 1984, she married Mark Walsh, a half-brother to the famous guitarist Joe Walsh. In 1985, Susan gave birth to her son David. Susan struggled with alcohol and substance abuse, though achieved sobriety in 1985. In her career of writing, Susan became friends with established journalist James Ridgway. He referred to her as his most reliable writer. On July 16, 1996, Susan left her apartment complex in Nutley, New Jersey, where her son and her boyfriend, Christian Peppo, also lived. Her estranged husband lived below them. Susan had left to run errands and to make a phone call at a payphone across the street leaving her son in the care of his father. She told Mark that she would return in half an hour. She didn't specify exactly where she was headed. In interviews with her friends and family, they stated that she didn't care so much about material things and that she didn't own a phone, which is the reason why she would use a payphone. This would be the last time that she was seen. At the time of her disappearance, she had enrolled in a master's program for English at New York University that she had halfway completed. Susan had supported herself and her son by working as a freelance journalist and various jobs as a stripper. When she disappeared, her friends had become worried that she relapsed into her addiction after previously maintaining 11 years of sobriety. According to her friends, they stated that she began drinking again and was using prescription drugs such as Xanax. Susan had been hospitalized for ulcers and told friends that she had emphysema. Her friends also stated that Susan had bipolar disorder and may have been depressed at the time she vanished. Police were able to eliminate her ex-husband Mark as a suspect. It was noted in the investigation that the page for July 1996 in her calendar was missing. Police had few clues to follow up on, and rumors began to circulate that Susan's disappearance was connected to her investigative journalism. Before she disappeared, Susan had written an in-depth report about a strip club ring where members of the Russian Mafia were forcing girls into the sex industry. In an interview with Ridgeway, he stated that the idea with the Russian Mafia was that they would tell girls who were actual formal, formally trained dancers in Russia that they could come to America and dance. But little did they know that they would come to America and would instead be at strip clubs. The article was published in the Village Voice, which is now a slightly defunct publication. They ceased articles in 2017, but they started posting new content on their website in 2021. Interestingly, the parent company that owned the publication of The Village Voice also owned Backpage, which was a website known for eliciting sex online. After the article's publishing, she became notably paranoid and friends believed that she was being stalked by organized crime members. Susan would tell her friends that she thought somebody was following her and she would always say something along the lines of it either being organized crime members or some sort of stalker or potentially even the government. Before her disappearance, Susan's attitude to dancing changed where she initially enjoyed the money and lifestyle. She quickly became disenchanted and detested the profession and patrons. After the Russian Mafia article, Susan explored an underground vampire community in New York City, but the newspaper did not run the story 
as it felt that her writing on the matter was not objective. According to one source, Susan had dated a man in the vampire subgroup that claimed to have been an actual vampire. According to Ridgeway, this vampire group that she wrote about had actually even stolen blood from a hospital. Police were not able to establish any evidence or clues with her disappearance and the articles that she wrote. Two days before her disappearance, Susan was recorded in a group interview for a friend's film called Stripped, which was produced by Jill Morley. In this interview, she made a comment to having a stalker of which this may have been a man named Billy Walker. In a 2006 interview, Walsh confided to a former boyfriend that another of her ex-boyfriends had been stalking her. The article also stated that her ex-husband, Mark, refused to provide forensic testing of the apartments. Susan also hired herself out to a German documentary crew that was making a film about Russian go-go dancers. It was also in the middle of developing their film when she disappeared. Her last contribution was to the book Red Light, Inside the Sex Industry, where she served as the primary researcher for the book and contributed photos and personal writings the month before her disappearance. People have stated that the book wasn't so much of her as being a journalist, though, as it seemed like she enjoyed being part of the subject matter. Some reviews of the book online criticize it for being more about just the pornography instead of actually any sort of information at all. Jill Morley stated, though, that Susan often stopped taking her medications that were to treat her bipolar disorder. Eventually, her friend James Ridgway became concerned for her health with her wrists being bandaged, and he questioned her about her drug and alcohol usage. Susan told him that she was fine and she would seek help if she needed it. On an episode of Disappeared, Jill Morley stated that she went undercover to other strip clubs to see if she could get any sort of information about Susan. Morley stated that when she would go around to these clubs asking questions, they would get very defensive and one place had even stated that if you keep asking questions you're going to disappear like her. Susan is described as having been 36 years old at the time of her disappearance with bleached blonde hair though her hair is also described as having been strawberry blonde. She was five foot six and anywhere from 110 to 120 pounds with blue eyes. She was known to have a scar on her right wrist. It's unknown what her outfit was on the day of her disappearance, though she had last been seen wearing a gold ring with a black stone. Her childhood nickname was Susie and her ears were pierced. She smoked cigarettes and spoke with a New Jersey accent. Susan left behind all of her personal belongings, which included her purse, keys, pager, money, and medication. Despite the story from Mark Walsh that Susan was going to make a phone call at a payphone, the police did not find any records of outgoing calls from the payphones near their apartment that morning. There have been eight comparisons on her NamUs profile. All have been excluded. According to the Doe Network, there are dentals available in her case, and she is considered endangered missing. There's been speculation that Susan may have attempted suicide prior to her disappearance. It is unclear whether Susan left on her own accord or if she was possibly taken by someone else. Susan's family and friends stated that she would have never left her son on her own will. Many of Susan's dancing peers speculated that she was the target of an organized crime unit. In the episode of Disappeared, it made the point that Susan seemed to have suspicion that something was going to happen to her soon. Apparently, she even wrote a letter to her son stating that if anything happened to her, that she still loved him. In 2006, investigators stated that they believed Susan was murdered and were investigating Mark Walsh. At the time, he was still living in the same apartment complex that Susan lived at before she disappeared. 
Police were going to use sonar technology to search a reservoir behind Walsh's father's house in 2006, but there's been no update to this lead. Christian Peppo, Susan's boyfriend, stated that the police did nothing to protect her from Billy Walker that was stalking her. Mark Walsh supposedly had a tape that recorded Walker threatening her. Walker was apparently a coke addict that ran with a biker gang and had written at some point that he chopped up bodies for the mob. Walker had also repeatedly called Susan in the weeks before she vanished. Apparently, she had started doing drugs and had sex with Walker before she disappeared. According to Peppo, Susan was going to expose Walker as a rat and blackmail the gangsters into killing him. There have been tips from witnesses that stated that they were that they saw her working as a prostitute in New Jersey a month after she disappeared, but these all ran cold. Susan's case has been featured on multiple TV outlets, such as Disappeared and Unsolved Mysteries.